What's up, Twitch? How's it going? Uh, glad to be streaming here on my own channel. I'm going to be doing, uh, finishing up a portrait retouch that I started, I think, the last time I was here. And I'm just going to finish up these photos uh, that I've been kind of just sitting on and needing to get done. And I figured I might as well do them while you guys are here. So, uh, welcome. If you're watching the replay, thanks for watching the Video On Demand replay. And again, uh, this is, uh, I'm Terry White, Worldwide Design and Photography Evangelist for Adobe. And I'm just going to go ahead and finish up the last three, actually four photos from, I just realized there were four, four photos from my last shoot. Uh, so, if you're here and you chime in on the chat while I'm working, I will say hello, like I just did to Victoria, who's here, or I'm saying now to Victoria, hello. And for everyone else, um, if you're not on the chat, well... Thanks for joining me. Thanks for watching either live or in the replay. And by the way, I just want to remind you, I am live also on twitch.tv slash Adobe Tuesdays and Fridays. Um, the time may change, but right now it's uh, 10 a.m. Eastern time. So this Friday, uh, 10 a.m. Eastern time, I'll be doing a whole thing on Lightroom Mobile. Uh, I invite you guys to come and check that out. All right, so with that said, let me go ahead and... Uh, Check my stream here, make sure everything's going good on the stream. Almost got it right, Victoria. Left off an H, I think. <laughs> there you go. Alright, just checking one more thing, and then we'll go ahead and switch cameras. Hey Jan, how's it going? All right, so like I said, uh, just a few minutes ago, I've got four photos left from the shoot that I've been kind of just haven't had time to get to, haven't had time to retouch. So I figured I would do a little of this on my channel today. Um, we're gonna start. At the top here and just work my way across to the other four uh, or the remaining four that are left and uh, again I'm just gonna go ahead and work I'll kind of explain things while I'm doing them uh, if I see um, questions in the chat that I need to address I will go ahead and address those along the way I'm also doing a render in the background I might want to pause that just so it's not taking up so much CPU Let's go to the media encoder and let's just simply pause this until I get done. All right, there we go. The minute I hit pause, things started responding again. Okay, so first and foremost, as I usually do in Lightroom, uh, I check some things that I can quickly fix in Lightroom before I even head over to Photoshop to make sure those things um, get corrected first and foremost, but also because Lightroom will do them non-destructively. So first and foremost, uh, I check the white balance, or maybe not first, but in this case, I'm going to check the white balance because it looked a little off, and it is. Uh, so I just took the white balance eyedropper, eyedropper dropped it on, um, dropped it on my uh, image just to in the area that should be white or or should be gray, white or black, and that corrected the white balance a bit. All right, now I can still warm the photo up a little bit more if I want to. And uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, go ahead and crop. So we'll grab the crop tool. And we'll go ahead and crop in just a little bit here. Maybe not that much. There we go. I had a little extra head space in there. We'll go ahead and do that. All right, next thing I want to do is I want to set my um, dynamic range. I'm going to go ahead and double click, holding down the shift key on the black slider. Double click on the white slider. And that will uh, give me a broader dynamic range for the photo. And uh, we'll go ahead and last but not least, we'll run the sharpen algorithm here that's designed for faces, one of the built in presets. Now, I still see a, a slight amount of clipping in the shadows here. As a matter of fact, it's so slight I can't even see where it's doing it. I'm just going to go ahead and drag the blacks area over 
little bit more see if I can correct that and that's pretty much it now at this point I'm gonna go ahead and um, maybe increase the vibrance a little bit since she's got that nice red jacket on make it a little bit brighter a little bit more vibrant and vibrance versus saturation uh, vibrance is usually good for increasing the overall saturation and color without a negatively or adversely affecting the skin tones where saturation doesn't care about skin tones it'll saturate the photo no matter what all right let's go ahead and uh, now I could do that to multiple photos at the same time so if they all kind of needed the same things then I could do that to multiple photos or I can uh, copy paste those adjustments I can also um, copy and paste selectively so if I only want to paste parts of those adjustments I could alright so now I'm gonna go ahead and hit command E that'll take me over to Photoshop where I can uh, continue uh, continue working on this hey Gobi J69 what's up and that'll open up the raw file in Photoshop and um, I can now continue working alright so first and foremost I'm gonna zoom in on the things that I see right off the bat that may be a little distracting she's got a few stray hairs here and although I increased or maybe I didn't I can't remember if I increased the contrast in oh I didn't so I didn't increase the contrast in Lightroom I was gonna say although I increased the uh, contrast in Lightroom I don't it doesn't look like I did it enough and it's because I didn't do it at all so one of the things I can do is while I'm here in Photoshop I can go ahead and adjust uh, using the levels command kind of bring up the levels a little bit and that'll just give me some overall um, make it overall look better than it did before with not only the hang on for a second here I might want to undo that for a sec and redo it okay I just wanted to check I was making sure that I didn't accidentally create that hot spot up there but that hot spot was already there and let's go ahead and move this down a bit and well cool I'm glad you won a subscription Jan that's awesome congratulations I'm glad you won a membership to Creative Cloud now the other thing I want to point out is that I'm on a preset or a um, workspace I should call it uh, called Terry White retouching because now in Photoshop CC the the workspace can control what tools you see so for example um, I can switch or reset my workspace there we go and that'll reset it to the tools that I use the most for my uh, retouching work so for example uh, I use the spot healing brush a lot and now I don't have to dig it out from the patch tool or wait a minute it looks like it's looks like it did not wait hang on it did not adjust for my okay, let's try this again oh no it's not adjusting my tools the way I want that one did let's go back to this one that one did not all right we'll go to my retouching twitch workspace there we go all right so we'll go ahead and put that away we'll turn the ruler back off and this um, I'm still not happy with that either hang on guys let me go back to my regular retouching workspace yeah, my tools are not adjusting the way I want them to. So let me go ahead and fix it. So I'm going to go to Toolbar. <clears throat> and on the Toolbar, uh, Customize Toolbar Options now, I have the ability to set them based on, um, based on what I like to do for a particular task. So for example, I'm doing portrait retouching now. So I like to have certain tools loaded and not, or, or, turn, or and tools that I don't use all the time turned off. So for example, I might have this set as a preset. Let me see if I do. I do. So let's go ahead and open that up. 
And there we go. So now I've um, put all my extra tools that I don't use regularly off to the side here. And I've separated out some tools that I use all the time. So now we'll go ahead and say done. And now my tool panel is almost the way I want it. Okay, it is the way I want it. <laughs> I had to look. So I got my uh, spot healing brush and my patch tool separated among other tools hidden that I don't use for um, portrait retouching. Uh, yeah, customized toolbars are um, are a great new addition and it's back in, in the fact that they work across workspaces. So uh, I can now I should now be able to switch back and forth between workspaces and my tools would change dynamically based on the workspace I'm on. Uh, and yes, Jan, she is a she is a good good model all the way around. All right, so first and foremost, I see some stray hair sticking out. And I can get rid of these a few different ways, but that one was pretty easy to get rid of with just the um, spot healing brush. I see some extra blemishes that are temporary. So we'll just go ahead and use the spot healing brush to kind of clear some of those up. Now, the um, a lot of times people appear to look like they have bags under their eyes, where really that's in, in many cases it's artificial like we have, all have things under our eyes and that's natural but if it's further down and dark dark or especially if it's darker on one eye and not the other that's usually created by the lighting and the shadows from her eyelashes actually if, if you're wearing eyelashes or you have long eyelashes and they stick out far and there's light coming down it's going to naturally cast a shadow down here so we don't want to punish her for me not lighting more directly into her face. Uh, so like this line and that line is accentuated more from the lighting than her actual eye. Now everything under her eye, that is naturally there. That's supposed to be there. But this line and that line are, are artificial and should not be a part of this portrait because they're not really there on her face. They're more created by shadows and the lighting. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use the patch tool and kind of remove those. Oh, hang on, I had the wrong setting for that. I noticed it was a little too harsh, so let's switch it from content aware to normal. Normal will usually blend in a little better, make it look a, bit, a little bit more natural. Content aware tries to be more exact. And we'll just go ahead and take care of that. Like I said, now so that leaves the stuff that should be under her eye or is naturally under her eye, like those lines. Those are just creases that are naturally on most people's eyes or should say 99% of people's eyes. So we'll leave those intact. But the shadows, we're not gonna punish her for because that's something that happened in the photographic process. Now there are little specks of makeup that I can see as I zoom in. And a few extra stray hairs there that she won't mind if we take care of. All right. Now, I'm a stickler for things like, for example, um, most women I would probably think have ear, you know, um, pierced ears. And pierced ears are great if there's an earring in the ear. If there's not an earring in the ear, then it just looks like a hole or a spot that shouldn't be there. So if there's no earring, I'd go ahead and just remove the hole. Uh, it doesn't take away from anything other than it's not a distracting hole. And when she's wearing earrings, the earrings will be there. So it's like this temporary closure of a hole just for the sake of the portrait because it didn't have anything in it. All right, and we got some more uh, hair issues here. Oh, you see the magic gate photo? Yeah, it's there. Uh huh. It is there from the last stream. And let's go ahead and grab my um, clone stamp tool. Hold on the option key. We'll just click a spot to sample and we we'll kind of get rid of some of this other stuff. These other flyaway hairs will make the brush a little bit bigger.
just kind of clean some of this up. Stray hairs, I know. People with long hair. It's the bane of our existence. And actually, the hairstylist did a pretty good job, but there are going to be hairs out of place. Especially when you zoom in. And we're just going to make sure we kind of get rid of some of those. We're not, we're giving her a, technically a haircut, but we're, I'm looking at it as we're combing it down. You gotta be careful too when you're using a feathered brush. If you get too close to the edge, like on her head, you'll actually start removing the hair that's supposed to be there. So either use a smaller brush or just be careful when you get to the close to the edge. <laughs> Can I get rid of the lines on our lips? I could, but why would I? Some things never change. All right. Zoom out real quick. Now, sometimes it's just you see things up here that look, look like, you know, that's just kind of a natural strand of hair that's going back, but it kind of looks like a bump. So I could either clone it out or just push it down with liquify, and sometimes I'll do a little of both just depending on what it is. So also, you'll see gaps sometimes, so let's go ahead and go to the clone stamp and we'll just fill this gap in real quick. Alright, that's okay. And for that bump, we're going to go to our filter, liquefy, zoom in up here. Go to our warp tool, just pull that down a little bit. And sometimes you kind of just want to even it out while you're here. Yes, use your liquefied powers for good, not evil. That's better. Now, this is a reflection on her tooth, but in the photo it actually looks like something white hanging from her tooth or from her lip. So, we're just going to go ahead 
kind of remove that. The other reflections are okay, except for maybe that one. The rest looks decent. <laughs> white spinach could be all right now that I'm looking I see some other areas that could take a little attention with liquefy let's go ahead and take care of those so now it's more about the clothes, uh, since this is a fashion type shoot. We don't want any unnecessary wrinkles or bumps in the clothes, so we kind of smooth that stuff out. We got one down there. Kind of a tricky one. I don't want to smush it too much. But I find with liquefy, if you do a little at a time, try not to overdo it, and try not to do it all at once, you could end up with with a much better um, liquefy. Also, brush size and where you're pushing is critical as well. That's better. All right. So we went from that to that. Not a huge deal. Not even something someone, you know, besides me would care about. But we got it, so we might as well take care of it. All right, everything else looks decent. Let me look at the eyes. I looked at everything around the eyes except the eyes themselves. Let's go to our sharpen tool. Just gonna sharpen that up a little bit. And let's check this ear. <laughs> yes, that's what mascara looks like close up. So these are a lot of little things people would never see because, you know, most people aren't going to be able to zoom in this close on your on your social media post or anything like that. But the cleaner you make it zoomed in, the better it's going to look, hopefully zoomed out.
Yes, yesterday I was working in Muse, Photoshop, InDesign, and showing a little bit of Creative Cloud in general. So I was doing 30 minute, 30 minute segments on each. So it sounds like you tuned in towards the end where I had moved over to um, Muse. Hopefully I'll get those replays up on my YouTube channel today. I actually paused the rendering to get to do this so I could have full full power on this computer. Um, any chance of getting more photographers into the stream? Anything's possible. Unfortunately, I don't control how they cast or how they get people in. Um, but I will make sure your request is duly noted and heard by the people, the powers that be. Would be nice to have a, a better balance between um, digital art versus traditional art. There's a lot of traditional art on the channel. I'd like to see um, more digital and more photography as well. And yep, Victoria's uh, streaming from her channel. She's doing photography work all the time. You guys should follow Victoria Pavlov. She streams on a regular basis. I'm just trying to soften this hot spot a little bit more. Kind of blending it in. And it just looks better. All right. We'll call that one a wrap. We'll save it. Head back to Lightroom. That'll put it right next to the uh, original. So for those of you who just got here, uh, that's where we started. And again, it didn't require a lot of work, but that's where we end it. So the before and the after. Just making things a little cleaner. And now I'll remove the before from this collection. I don't need it in this collection anymore. So we'll just delete it. And now we'll go to our next one. <laughs> yes, good models and good photography makes uh, my job a lot easier. makes it a lot less work to do. Now for whatever reason a particular one I didn't like the um, the overall tonal range on that one. A little too warm, a little too red. Maybe something like that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I hate hitting a key by mistake and it throws you into a mode. You don't know what you did. You don't remember which key it is. And especially if you've never seen that mode before, not knowing how to get out of it is painful. 
So I feel your pain with the accidental hitting Q for quick mask. And when you're using the same model over and over again, or at least you're re retouching images from the same shoot over and over again, what it really makes you realize as a photographer is if there was something like a hair out of place or a piece of lint or something that you wished you had removed or seen during the shoot so that you wouldn't have to retouch it out of every single photo. So, for example, I could have had the hairstylist walk over and just give her a quick pat down or, or comb just real quick so that I wouldn't have so much of this to do on every single photo. So, lessons learned when you get to post. Um, and one of the things I hate to hear photographers say is, oh, I'll just fix that later in Photoshop. Well, no. Why, why wait? Fix it now if you can then you won't have it to do in Photoshop. It's much easier to fix it in the camera uh, or remove something, take, you know, pause for a second, remove something out of the scene versus thinking, oh, not a problem. I can fix that in Photoshop. And if it were only one time you had to fix it, probably not a big deal. But if you got to fix it on every single photo, you've just caused yourself a lot more work than not shooting that problem in the first place. So yes, while it is technically possible to fix things, that should not be the goal. That should not be the accepted practice. Is that, oh yeah, that, that problem I'm seeing right now, I could fix that later. But if you can fix it now, fix it now. Don't wait till later. So if I would have had the hairstylist just walk over and just touch this up just a little bit while I was shooting then I wouldn't have to do it now And you won't see everything while you're taking the pictures. Um, yeah, agreed. <laughs> Very easy to physically go move something and, and press the button a bunch of times, then to press the button a button a bunch of times, and then have to digitally remove it a bunch of times too. So, but a lot of times we we don't you know we're in such a hurry we're so excited as photographers we don't pause enough to check everything and see what everything looks like on that frame you just took. Walk your way around the frame, make sure the fr everything in the frame is the way you want it, then shoot all you want. Take as many more captures after that as you want. And I've gotten better at it, but I'm still, I still uh, have that as an area I can improve. Spending more time, snap that first test photo, and I'm, when I snap a test photo, I'm usually looking at the lighting. I'm looking at uh, the settings for the camera, not so much the subject. And I need to spend more time and look at the subject to make sure everything is the way I want it in the subject, as opposed to having to come in and say, oh, wish I'd fixed that earlier, instead of having to do it 50 times or 10 times now. So for example, like I was saying, this, this shadow is caused by the lighting. Had I looked at that in the frame, I might have adjusted the lighting on that particular um, part of her face to make those shadows uh, less pronounced or not exist at all. All right, um, is it Jerez or Jerez? Have a uh, good day at work and uh, thanks for stopping by. We'll catch you on the next one.
Thank God for the engineer that invented Liquify. Little pieces of mascara, little pieces of makeup that break off when people blink, when they rub their eyes. Things you probably wouldn't see zoomed out, but when you zoom in, you can definitely see them. tend to apply a little dodging and burning to the photo to just give it a little bit more depth so we make the uh, shadows a little more shadowy or darker we make the highlights a little brighter we make the dog bark thinks I'm ignoring her now. Lisa. <laughs> yes. Also a fairly new um, feature in Liquify is this pin edges checkbox over here in the upper right corner. Before, if I were trying to pull in this uh, sleeve right next to the edge of the photo, I'd have to be very careful not to pull the actual edge of the photo in. Now, uh, the, pin edges, the pin edges keeps you from doing that by accident. And I've been in that case where I've finished the photo and then even posted it online and looked at it and said, wait a minute, there's a little dip in the edge of the photo because I didn't notice it right away. Uh, so it's great that that's there now so I don't make that mistake anymore. All right, I like this one a lot. So we'll save that one. And we'll head back to Lightroom and we will go to our next one. Let's see what this one looks like. So again, here's our before. That's the before, that's where we started, right out of the camera. And that's our after. 
so before and after so again we'll take the before one take it out of the collection because I want the at the end of the day I want the collection to represent all the ones that are finished thank you Victoria Uh, this now we got a different outfit, different look, and I'm going to do a non-standard crop on this because there's a little bit more headroom than I want, and I don't want to crop in from the sides, so we're just going to make that a non-standard crop for now. our saturation a little bit and we'll take a look at the contrast Add a little bit more contrast here in Lightroom and then we'll go ahead and head over to Photoshop with it so two down two to go this is our third one lots of flyaway hair on this and I know what happened she took the the first top off put the second top on over her head pulled the hair out of place I can sense it A lot of times we overlook, like we spend so much time um, 
concentrate on someone's face or head or everything above the neck or shoulders that we don't get the other things that are in the photo such as their arms or hands or legs so just make sure you take a look at those things too make sure there's nothing that needs attention And now we get to the messy part. The easiest way to fix this or cleanest way to fix this is going to be with the clone stamp tool. And if messy hair is your thing, or you think it adds to the shot, then leave it. It is not a requirement that hair always be neat and in place. It's going to take some more blending work because we're getting up to that shadow in the upper right hand corner. So it's not the same color background all the way across. So that might take a little bit more work to blend in. case this one might work better with content aware instead of normal a little better
Victoria, I can't imagine life without Photoshop. It's a tool I'm in every day. <laughs> yeah, that could be true. There could be another universe without Photoshop, without Adobe, without computers, without electricity, <laughs> without the internet, or maybe there's another universe where all of those things have evolved and we, we no longer need them. Could be. And we will probably never know. <laughs> you get scared when you think about it. Some of these hairs, like that one long one, I will probably leave. Because I'd have to go take it all the way out. I'm not sure it's worth it.
So Jan, I know you're on the Adobe channel, uh, at least when I'm on. What other streamers do you like to watch? Hmm. Again, you can spend hours working on something that most people will never even see. But it's going to bug you knowing that if you zoom in, you'll see it. So it looks like you spend a lot of time here. You got like several favorites. Yeah, zoomed out, no one's going to see that hair. <laughs> that little bit of hair on the ear. But by all means, if you can fix it, fix it. Yeah, software and, or I'm sorry, um, design and photography as a hobby is an awesome hobby to have. Photography is my hobby. I do design only out of necessity. Although I like design, I'm just not, I don't consider myself a designer. I'm more the person that I can duplicate anything because I know the software and I know what I like when I see it but like most people I or most design or most designers even coming up with the original concept is always the hardest for me show me something no problem I'll figure it out I'll dissect it I'll show you how to build it in the Adobe tools but coming up with that original idea that's always hard for me
Now what this has caused me to notice is just kind of how the lipstick is bleeding off the edges here of her lip and it's becoming a lighter color. Oops, let's try that again. Yeah, I don't like the way that came out either, so let's do this. So what I'm doing is giving myself a line, a boundary that I can uh, clone within. I don't have to worry about it going outside that boundary and into the lip. And then I can just come in and clean that up a little bit. Because if it's not selected, ooh, that's too hard of an edge though. Hang on, undo, undo, soften that edge up a little bit. Two pixels is probably enough. That's better. You love that? Again, it's the little things. That make your photos stand out. I always say retouching is not one big thing. It's dozens or hundreds of little things. Oh, hang on. Forgot to feather it. Yeah, subtle changes are uh, the best. When I first started retouching, I was definitely overdoing it as most new retouchers do. And a lot of subtle changes just overall look better. I've even had people on my stream say, do you ever do a, an extensive job in Photoshop? And I, I always say that I hope I never have to. I hope that my work doesn't require such a drastic retouch that it's going to take me hours and hundreds of layers to get it right. That usually means something's bad with the photo. Now, if it's a composite or concept art, then that's different. But when it comes to retouching, hopefully my work never needs 
extensive work. <laughs> and that, that usually means something went horribly wrong in the photography itself. You know, if I'm looking through that viewfinder and saying to myself, oh, I'm going to spend hours on this one in Photoshop, then it's time to put the camera down. It's time to fix whatever is making me say that. HDR is awesome. But like anything, uh, when, H <coughs> when HDR first became a popular thing with uh, digital photography just like everything else people were overdoing it creating what we cut what we dubbed the Harry Potter effect yeah Julian cost is awesome at compositing she certainly is all right so let's look at our work before that's where we start it and that's where we end it Just got out of bed <laughs> with great makeup and combed my hair a little bit. Rough night before the night began. All right, just, just kidding, just kidding. All right, so one more to go. This next one should be pretty simple. For whatever reason, she she liked the production shot. And now I gotta see what I wanna do with this production shot. See, the thing I don't like about, oh, I was gonna say this. The thing I didn't like about it was it's slightly out of focus, but it's not too bad. Also, the question is, do I really need all of it? Like, do I really need that area over to the right beyond the, uh, beyond the backdrop? And the answer's probably no. And that's probably a better crop. Yeah, I could get used to that. Yep. All right. And let's go ahead. Yeah, the eyeliner from Westcott is awesome. I was going to say, what did I just press? I hit the S by mistake for soft proofing. Hello, Haxert. How's it going? All right, like I said, here we are. This one should go pretty quick because it's really <coughs> just, just a production shot, but we'll take care of the same things. I think someone needs a timeout in her crate. <laughs> she hears the word crate, she freaks out. It's a very nice crate, it's got a nice bed in it and everything. Oh. She's resisting, complaining. What are we doing today? We're just about finished, actually. I retouched four, four remaining photos from my last photo shoot. So we're go going back and forth between Lightroom and Photoshop.
I'm glad you like it, Jan. Got a little too close to that ear, so using the history brush, I could just restore it and bring it back. I'll worry about the hair on the ear in just a minute. I know. She hears some workers outside, so she's concerned and protecting me from the strange hammering that's going on out there. But I'm just about done. You guys hear the hammering? I could hear the dog. Uh, no, that's actual hammering. She's right there. I can see her. She's barking at the uh, front door. Let's try and reduce some of this.
Yeah, they uh, they're always sitting still when you're not live streaming <laughs> or on the phone or in a meeting or on a conference call. But the minute you're not paying them any attention and you're paying something else some attention, that's when they kind of like saying, hey, what's up with this? I'm the center of your universe. You should be paying attention to me right now. All right. I think we're good to go on this one, like I said. It's kind of a zoomed out shot anyway. Oh, it's almost six there. We'll see. You must be in Europe. Is that true? situation worse let's put it back and let's fix it this way well Jan we're almost done anyway this is the last one Oslo Norway I haven't been there in a few years but I have been there Something along those lines, last but not least, quick dodge and burn. Yes, I did like it. We used to do our, it was one of the stops on our road tour. Um, for many of the Adobe road tours I've done. So again, our before. And our rendering after. After, before, after. Make it a little cleaner. And now we don't need this one anymore. And now I'm done. So now I will take all the edits from there to there. We'll export them out. I usually do two sets of exports. One for web with my watermark on it. Those I've already exported, so we'll do them again real quick. And I do another set of high res for print that don't have my watermark on them. And I also have one last export that I do for Adobe Stock. <laughs> so if I was if I'm gonna put these on Adobe Stock, they'll already be set at the right resolution and the right everything as well. So Lightroom is now doing my three exports for my three sets of photos. And it's again it's a background process, so I can just continue working while that's going. But here come the ones for the web gallery first. Why is 82? Did I miss one? Oh, 82 just doesn't have the word edit on it. Okay. Whenever I don't see the word edit, it makes me think, oh no, you didn't retouch that one. But it just, it was a PSD, it just didn't have the word edit on it. I'm wondering if I didn't finish that one though, but we'll check. All right, let's see what that one looks like. Yeah, that one definitely got retouched. Okay, so the ones that 
Got exported for the web gallery, of course, have my watermark on each one, so they're all set, ready to go. And then the ones that, oops, sorry, wrong photo. The ones that don't are bigger, higher resolution, that don't have the watermark on them. All right, so we need to go back up. So now what I want to do is I want to take these and we're going to rename them. Change the word edit. Oh, there's the ones for Adobe Stock. Change the ones for word from edit to actually we'll do these first since they're since they're ready. These are the ones for print. So I do a quick rename so I know which ones are which, even though they're in different folders. We'll rename these edit to print, rename. We'll rename these edit to web. Renamed, and now I have two sets of photos ready to go. All right, glad you like them, Jan. Um, I hope she likes these for her portfolio. Uh, I will I've used a few or I will use one, at least one of these in my fashion portfolio as well um, I gotta decide which one I kind of like this one this may be the one that goes in my portfolio if I haven't already put it in there I can't remember but that's definitely one of my faves all right guys thanks for watching the stream uh, we'll catch you on Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern uh, twitch.tv slash Adobe and uh, thanks for watching we'll catch you on the next one Cheers.